Hello everyone. Previously, we discussed how to analyze data from design experiments using ANOVA to compare means. The objective is to compare these specific treatments and test the hypothesis that the effects of the treatments are all the same. In this case, we assume that the treatments are not a random sample. However, we can also consider the treatments as random samples from a population of all possible treatments. These are the aims of the lecture. Previously, we used ANOVA to compare the treatment means. We assume that the treatments are not a random sample from all possible treatments. This is known as a fixed model. However, we can also use ANOVA to compare the variances among treatments. We assume the treatments are a random sample from all possible treatments. Strictly speaking, we are never doing either fixed or random model. We always do a mixed model because in the linear additive model, the overall mean or the intercept is always fixed and the residuals is always random. In a random model, we are interested in the variances such as the among treatment variance. Therefore, the hypothesis for the ANOVA we cannot use as our alternative hypothesis because the variance is always positive. In this case, a post hoc mean comparison does not make sense because the means are random samples from all possible means. In a random model, if the null hypothesis is rejected, we can conclude that the variation among treatments are not due to random chance. So there is a treatment effect. In balanced data, the decision of using fixed or random model does not affect the calculation of the degrees of freedom, the sum of square and the mean square. However, in some model, it could affect the calculation of the F statistic. Let's see some examples. For a CRD experiment with T treatments and R replication, the ANOVA table is the expected mean square for the fixed model, The expected mean square for the random model. The F statistic. For a two-factor experiment with A levels of factor A and B level of factor B arranged as a CRD with a replication, the ANOVA table is the expected mean square for the fixed model.
the expected mean square for the random model. The F statistic for the fixed model. For the random model, for the interaction. For factor A and factor B, in practice, the distinction between fixed and random model are not a clear cut. In a plant breeding trial, varieties tested are not a random sample. However, we want to predict their future performance. Thus, variety is usually fitted as random. For phosphate application experiment, we try to make a conclusion that phosphate treatments affect potato yield in general, not only in this trial. So the phosphate effect in this trial can be considered as random sample from all possible effects in all similar trials. In this case, fit phosphate treatment as random could be a better model. However, we cannot do the post hoc test. When we have many treatments, random model could be a better choice to avoid multiple comparison problems. A random model also can handle unbalanced data better than the fixed model. We can also use both fixed and random models to analyze our data. This is known as the linear mixed models or LMM. In general, the choice of which term to classify as fixed and which as random depends on the aim of the analysis. LMM is using maximum likelihood method, or MLE, to obtain the estimate of the parameters in the LMM. Therefore, LMM can handle unbalanced data and also relax the assumption of formal ANOVA. Let's see an example. We have factor A with L levels and factor B with B level tested in a CRD experiment with R replications. Factor A is fitted as fixed and factor B is fitted as random. In this case, what would the interaction between these two factors would be? The interaction would be random. An interaction between two fixed terms is fixed. The interaction between two random terms is random. And the interaction between a fixed and a random term is random. The expected mean square and the F statistics are
MLE is a method of estimating the parameters of a statistical model given observations by finding the parameter values that maximize the likelihood of making observations given the parameters. MLE helps us answer this question, which are the best parameters for my model? In LSE, we use sample statistics to estimate the population parameters. We use probabilities to measure the accuracy of these estimates. In MLE, we use the expected population parameters to calculate the likelihood that the data are taken from that population. Let's see an example. Suppose we have data points representing the weight of students in a class. These data are samples from the weights of all students on that class. This data appears to be normally distributed. We want to know the mean weight and the standard deviation of all students in that class. We can compute the mean and the standard deviation from the data and calculate the probability of this estimate reflect the population parameters. This is the least square approach. If we have two population, which of this population would maximize the probability of observing this data? These data are more likely to obtain from population 2. This is the maximum likelihood approach. MLE is an iteration process. It requires an initial value and the speed of the conversion depends on how close the initial value was to the true parameter. This initial value is more important in the complex model as inappropriate initial value could lead to non-convergence and increase the possibility of a local optimum. A local optimum occurs because not all possible solutions can be evaluated. If we use a fixed model, we are testing the means. If we use a random model, we are testing the variances and should not test the means. In practice, even when we use a random model, we still interested in the treatment of facts. In a mixed model, the estimate for fixed effects is called the best linear unbiased estimators or blue. And the estimate for random effects is called the best linear unbiased predictors or blob. Blob is a shrinkage estimator that takes account of the variance. In balanced data, blue and blob are the same. In unbalanced data, a blob will be closer to zero if it is estimated with less confidence due to lack of observation or large variance. It can handle a large amount of unbalanced data. This is especially important in the era of big data. It also relaxes some assumption in the ordinary least square method. 
There are two types of linear mixed model, general linear mixed model for normal data, and generalized linear mixed model for non-normal data. Let's see an example. The experimental factors in this experiment are varieties and spacing. This is a 3 by 4 RCBD design. The skeleton ANOVA. For fixed model, we obtain an ANOVA table. For random model, we obtain the variance components. In balanced data, we can calculate the, these variance components from the ANOVA table based on the expected mean squares. This analysis were done using MLE methods. For the random model, we cannot use F-test to test the hypothesis. We have to use other methods, such as the log likelihood ratio test, to do the hypothesis testing. In balanced data, we can calculate the variance components from the ANOVA table based on the expected mean squares.
The variance components calculated from the expected mean squares and the output from RR Studio are not quite the same. RR Studio uses different techniques to calculate these variance components. Due to the way it calculated, a negative variance component can also be obtained from the expected mean square approach. We can also fit a mixed model, such as block and spacing are fixed and variety is random. The interaction between fixed and random term is random. Now, can you do this?